So I think I can resume. I was chatting a little bit during the break with uh, your colleagues, uh, some of your colleagues, uh, okay? I mean, we all know that uh, course uh, is not so intuitive, okay? We, we can say course is a sort of a patch to a mechanism, uh, you know, that started in a certain way 30 years ago where everything was trusted and now you need to find a way to allow different websites to, to talk with your uh, application without risking to leak uh, information to other applications that you're using, okay? Uh, we, we know it's not so intuitive, so try to think a lot and a bit uh, and, and think well about uh, how things work and if you're in doubt, just ask during the labs, during the breaks, in the lectures and so on, okay? But you will see that using it for our course will not that difficult, okay? But since this is a course focused on cybersecurity, of course, we would like to understand the risks and the security implication of what we are doing, okay? So as I promised before the break, just have a look at uh, what happens in case uh, uh, we forget to put this uh, up use course, okay? So let's save and reload the application, okay? You see, there's a, a request to localhost 3001. You see, it's red, it's no, uh, I mean, you, you have a, 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 re a request header, you have a response header, so you got the an answer from the server. The server replied with an answer. But the point is that the browser doesn't want you to access the response, okay? Course, missing allow origin, okay? So, we have a request, we had an origin during the request, okay? But in the answer, there's no, uh, you know, allow origin something, not asterisk nor anything else, okay? And you will immediately see that things don't work. You see uh, that before the break, we had the, the text flipped, and here nothing works. You know, request starts from the browser towards the server, the server doesn't say it's allowed, and so the browser will not let uh, the application access the response, okay? So, just to see how the configuration object works, let's change things, uh, uh, no, a little bit more. So, course options, uh, credentials, I mean, we forget about credentials now, we don't have credentials, we just test uh, with localhost, uh, 5173 actually, save it, reload the application, and you will see this uh, request, localhost 3001, goes ahead, and it has an origin, localhost 5173, and in the answer, there's no asterisk, but that's exactly what we brought uh, in the configuration options, of course, okay? And if by mistake I put something else, like 574, save, reload, okay? Things will not get through. Again, course allow origin not matching origin, okay? So it's not that it's missing now. There is one, but it doesn't match because the, the request is origin 5173 with a three, and the allow is seven four, with a four, okay? They don't match. The browser doesn't let the script access the content, okay? So they need to match, either with the asterisk or with the actual uh, uh, same origin. Okay, so let's just uh, uh, put things uh, back. Okay, save, because I need it later, <laughs> okay? So, more or less, that's all about, co yes, that's the question, yes? Uh, in this case, since the origin is different, yes? The localhost import uh, 3001 won't send the data, or is the browser the... No, no, the, 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 the data is sent, is you see. Yeah, it's a browser that blocks the JavaScript from accessing the answer. If you go to request, 
where there's no request here because uh, the string was empty. But, uh, and um, yeah, but you see, there was a, the answer as well. It's actually a JSON. The answer is here. It's just that the browser doesn't want the JavaScript to access the response. Because if the JavaScript access the response, it takes it, it sends it to the origin, which can be the malicious actor. Okay? So this change happens. And that's why we need that pre-flight when we send private information in the first request, because this change happens. Okay? And we need to prevent sending info private information before. But the, we will see the options uh, when we have the authentication, okay? So when we have the post, well, before the authentication maybe, when we add something even without the authentication, but we need to have at least a post, okay? With the get, the, the pre-flight doesn't happen, okay? Yes? With the course, we allow uh, w which, uh, I mean, in this case, so if we allow everything, we allow any server that serve the original page uh, to serve an application that they can allow to load from any other place, okay? No, uh, you don't need to think in terms of server, but in terms of origin. HTTP, localhost, 5173 uh, can access, no, I mean, think in terms of the server. I mean, the, the localhost 3001 allows any uh, application coming from any origin, which means any server like uh, HTTP 5173, to load its information. Okay? So it can be localhost, it can be www.politit, it can be bank.com, it can be anybody. Okay? It's the server that says it's safe to access its information. Okay? You. Yeah, you can limit it like uh, this, this one, okay? You can decide that you only allow localhost 573 or you allow bank.com or www.bank.com or www.polito.it and so on, okay? But this is just because the browser would like to keep each website separate in terms of information, okay? Because you risk loading uh, private information from the server, okay? I hope it's clear. Maybe you need to think a little bit about uh, this course. I know it's not so easy to understand in the beginning, but maybe you play a little bit by yourself with this code at home or, or during the lab, and the next lab, okay? Which we, you will have to use it because with this, this, without this app use course, you will not be able to experiment with the API server, so you will have to use it. Uh, for any request, okay? Um, uh, and so, uh, you'll try to understand if something is not clear, we can come back and talk again, I'm back, I could talk again about this uh, also during the classroom, okay? Now, this is the scheme that you should have in mind for, for the React application, okay? Okay. So, now, we are going to talk about uh, React life cycle. This will be a long topic. It will probably takes, uh, take uh, the whole, well, today for sure, but uh, I mean whole uh, Thursday, okay? Because re this is really important one and it's uh, the basis on which we can uh, make uh, the whole application work. So load data from the server, the API server, and store data and so on. Okay, so you, you need to understand very well how things work. Okay, so the subtitle is uh, There's life before and after the return JSX. So something is happening also beyond the render phase of the components. Okay, and we need to understand what's happening. Okay, so f uh, at the moment we just said, well, in React, 
At a certain point, components start to exist. React calls the function, the function uh, calls uh, return with the JSX, and this is the stuff that gets, uh, ma uh, gets put into, well, that is put into the virtual DOM, okay? And then there are the, the alignment between the virtual DOM and the DOM happens and things get displayed, okay? But we never talked about uh, what's, what's happening before and after, okay? We encountered this situation, but I didn't point it out because, uh, you know, we need to discuss uh, in more in depth about this. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, we basically work thinking in terms of this state. So, uh, a component when when has different props, so receives different props, or has a different state value, it re-renders. Okay, and that's what uh, we discussed until now. So every time it's needed, React calls the function of the component, decides what, what should be modified in the virtual DOM and renders the component so uh, it makes it appear in the, in the application with the new aspect, okay? But before doing this, the component uh, uh, starts in another state. So there is a state machine for each component. Before being uh, rendered, so displayed, the component is first mounted. That's the technical term, React technical term for saying that the component uh, is inserted into the virtual DOM, okay? So first it's created, of course, but this is internal data structure of React, and then it's inserted in the virtual DOM, and it means uh, it will be shown at a certain point. And at the same, um, I mean, similarly, uh, when the component is not part of the virtual DOM anymore, the component is unmounted. So uh, until now we just said it disappears, okay? Which is true because indeed the data structures uh, are destroyed and so on. But before doing this, the React framework unmounts the component, okay? So in short, we have a, a way to uh, do operations in all three states, okay? So before the component gets rendered, when it gets rendered, and before it gets uh, unmounted, so before it disappears. And this might be useful sometimes, okay? If we don't care, I mean, we just have a default behavior. We do nothing during the mounting, we do nothing during the unmounting, and we just decide what to do when you need to update it, so when you need to render the component. So we write the return with the JSX as we did until now, okay? But uh, uh, we will discover that uh, uh, it's sometimes it's needed to customize what happens in those three different moments, mounting, updating, and unmounting, okay? Just an example, at component mount, so when it first appears in the virtual DOM, we would like to run maybe a function that loads the data that needs to be shown, okay? So it goes to the server, takes the data, and show this data, okay? Like your table, you have the table in the, in the lab, we have the table with the answer list, you have the table with the film list. Before showing the table, we would like to load the data uh, that, that, that contains the list of the films, okay? Now, it's just uh, um, um, hard-coded in the code, right? It's just a constant. But that's not the way in which we would like to have a, a, a real application. A real application goes to the server, asks for the data, and then it shows the data, okay? And where should we do it? We cannot do it when it's updating. Because when you update a component, this happens every time you change something. You cannot just load and reload again information from the server. So you need to have a different mechanism. And that's what we are going to see today, okay? So, these are the three states, mounting, updating, and unmounting, okay? And you already know that during update, you can use the use state, 
they use context and other stuff which we are we don't care we will not see in this course okay but we already used the use state and last time we saw the use context which is basically a way to receive additional properties okay and that's what we know until now when you mount the component uh, the only thing you need to know is that during the render phase well uh, after uh, you mount, uh, after React mounted the component, it calls the uh, function once, and it gets the JSX that is what is needed to be put into the virtual DOM. Okay, uh, but this happens just once, and then you are in this state update. Okay, until the component is in the virtual DOM, and then you go to unmount. Okay. Well, basically, you can do something that means uh, free resources in case you need it, okay? We did nothing until now. But React works, uh, uh, thinking in terms of two phases for each of these state, okay? So for each state, mount, update, and unmount, there are three, uh, two phases. The render phase, which basically it calls our function and it gets the JSX. And then there is the commit phase. That is what happens after it got the JSX. Okay? And in short, we already said that uh, React uh, uh, updates the virtual DOM, and then it makes difference with the old virtual DOM, and it commits all the differences to the uh, actual DOM. So it shows something in the browser window. In this phase, now, today, we learned that we can make other things happen, well, those, uh, the, the so-called side effects. And we have a, a new hook, which is called use effect. The other is more specific, so we will only see use effect. That is basically to run side effects. So to run code in this phase, in the commit phase of the component, okay? And here, that is the place where we will do, for instance, data loading or, or update of states uh, that depends on other things and so on, okay? Um, so, until now we said there are functions, we define a component, they take properties, maybe they can have a state if we like, with the use state in a controlled fashion, but then we would like also to have additional operations, which are not to be performed every time you have a render, okay? Because what you write inside the function of the component gets executed every time you need to render the component. But now we need to run something, not here in the render phase, but in the commit phase. So maybe just once at the mount, or maybe just uh, when something changes, when a prop changes, when a state changes, or when the component gets unmounted, typically to free resources, okay? So examples of side effects you would like to run in some components, of course, not in all components, but in some components. Uh, data fetching. That's the most common one, okay? We need to load data from servers. Some, in some places, we need to do that. But we cannot do it in the render phase. Otherwise, every time you have a render, you load data, okay? And these are more specific examples, like logging, uh, setting up subscriptions, uh, and, and so on, okay? Managing timeouts. Well, timeouts might be useful sometimes, okay? So how can we do this operation? Well, we need to have React help us, okay? And indeed, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, what React uh, does uh, with this uh, use effect, okay? So we don't want to w have these operations during the render phase because these are side effects. So things that change the state of something, but uh, I mean, the, the React framework is based on the idea that once you know the props and the state, you know how to render the component, okay? So if we go and insert something in that code, we will risk, well, first, 
to run it when it's not needed, but also to, you know, to create a side effect where, where you should not have side effects, okay? So every time you rerun the function, you, you do something in addition to what is specified by the state and the props, and you never know what is going to happen, okay? So React allows us to run side effects after the rendering and after the DOM has been updated by means of a call uh, of a hook uh, that is the use effect, to which we will po pass a function, of course, because if you would like to run code, you need to pass a function, okay? So it would be a mistake to perform side effects directly in the body of the component because the body of the component is executed every time you need a render, okay? And so there's not a place to, uh, where you would like to have side effects, okay? So we will now see the use effect hook. Well, actually, remember, logging, actually, the console log is also a side effect, <laughs> okay? Because uh, it, it prints something outside the component. It goes outside the virtual DOM, right? Uh, this is just an example. I know that I also use the console log sometimes in, in the, in the uh, while, while typing the, um, the components, uh, just for debugging, okay? Because they say console log is like uh, a print that we need to use to understand what's happening, okay? And it basically has, a, yes, it has a side effect in the sense that it prints to the console, but for, the, for our purpose, it's a useful side effect and it has no effects on the, how React works. So we are not modifying anything inside the data structures of React. But if you do something else, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, modifying a state, for instance, th that would be wrong, okay? We, we can do modification to the state, but if you remember, we only, need, we only did modification to the state in event handlers, not directly in the code of a component, right? We never wrote... Uh, set something in the code of the component. We wrote it in a function that has been attached to an event handler, okay? Okay, good. So, uh, rendering is under React control. So if you perform a side effect in the code that defines a component, you never know when it will be executed, okay? Uh, if you would like to do this operation, you have this hook use effect to which you can pass a function and the hook will be configured in a way that you know when the function will be executed, okay? So this use effect with the, the empty array, in short, will tell the, the function to be, will tell React to execute the function only when the component is mounted. Okay, that's an example, but we will have, of course, all the specification of this uh, hook. Okay, so that's the hook, use effect. You need to import it as usual, okay? Import use effect from React. Use effect has two parameters. First, a mandatory one, a callback. If you don't put a callback, uh, you have nothing to execute, so basically it's useless, right? So, I mean, uh, you need to pass a callback. So a function to be executed with the logic that you would like to execute. Uh, and then this callback will be uh, executed only on certain occasions. And this occasion is controlled by the dependencies, so the second parameter, okay? An optional array of dependencies Use effect execute the callback only if at least one of the dependencies have changed between the renderings, okay? Uh, I know it sounds very intricate, very difficult, okay? But this is also very dense in the sense that it can be used in many different ways. And of course, we, we spend a lot of slides on this. So the dependency array, well, it's optional. If you don't provide it, Every time the component gets rendered, the side effect will be run. Not during the uh, render phase, but during the commit phase, okay? So after, here, in the commit phase, after, after running the code of the component. 
okay, return and so on. And then React knows that you registered a callback to be run every time. It calls your callback, okay? It has side effects, that's fine because it doesn't run here, but it runs in the commit phase. Good. An empty array is probably the most common situation. An empty array, so open and, and close the squared bracket. The side effect runs only once, only one, one time after the initial rendering. So in short, at mount time. The component is mounted, it first appears in the virtual DOM, the side effect is run. And that's the place where you typically run your function to load the data. Because when, you, when the component appears, you would like to also load, start loading the data. There's no reason to load the data before, and then uh, otherwise it would be too late to, uh, to wait okay, uh, for other renderings. Or it's very flexible. You see that there's an array, and you can specify a list of variables that says that if their value has changed, the function, the callback, will be run again. Okay? So the side effect will run once after the initial rendering as before, but also every time when any dependency value changes. And here you can specify props and states, and or states, depending on what you need. Can be empty, just once at the mount time. C there can be a list of things, uh, once at mount time, plus every time one of the things in the list changes its value. Okay? And you can put properties and states there. Okay? Of course, we need to see examples, otherwise it's too theoretical. Uh, just how to write? Well, how to write is very easy. One is a callback, right? Uh, so uh, the first parameter is a callback. If you don't have one ready, I mean, you don't have a reference to a function, you just define one. Open and close the bracket, arrow, and whatever code you like. No second parameter. The side effect runs after every rendering. An empty array, the side effect runs once after the initial rendering, but you need not to forget the comma, open and close squared bracket, so the empty array. Or there can be some props and state, okay? And this will run once after the, rend the first rendering, and then after every time, uh, props or state changes, okay? And this is automatically controlled by React. So React remembers the last value that you passed, checks the new value. If they don't match, React will re-render, uh, recall, uh, sorry, your callback, okay? The render is another thing. Recall, uh, rerun your callback, okay? Of course, we need to see examples. Let's have a look at an example, okay? Of course, we start with very simple code, console log, <laughs> in the callback, so we understand what's happening. So when we see the print, we'll see what's happening. So we have a counter. Uh, so count, that's a uh, React uh, um, component. We get a prop, num, with a number to show. A very simple uh, component, probably it's a, what's, yeah, a div, okay? Could be a paragraph, whatever you want. Use effect, console log, my, my static number is props num, okay? This is run only when the component mounts because you have the empty array. Use effect, console log, my dynamic number is uh, an array, with a value, props num, so I props. This will be run the first time, plus every time the num changes, okay? So let's see this at work, okay? And then we'll come back to the timeline. So that's the example I was running before, okay? So I'll Rick, okay, we don't really care. Uh, um, 
body up and so we have this div tree and the plus button to which we attach an event to increase the value of the button okay let's see the components maybe it's no the count okay count as a props num okay two hooks use effect with two functions okay and so in app, I put a state with a number because I need to receive the props from some place. I need to update the state to pass a different prop each time I press the, the plus button. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. Uh, so in the client, app, app as a normal state, const num, num, set num, use state three. Okay, we start from three, we just choose three. And then there's this count, num equal to num. And then there's, there's a button on click set num i, i plus one. Okay, remember the state depends on from, the, from the previous one. We pass a callback, okay, to update the state. We could write to e, i plus one, but that's wrong, okay. That's wrong because the state depends on the previous one. And we risk uh, losing some updates. Okay? So the property passed in this way changes. So in count, uh, count is the code that we saw on the slide. You receive a props, props num. That's what it change, what changes. So of course the render will change. So if I press the button plus, 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 of course it will change. So that's the usual stuff. Uh, we have an handler that set a state, React uh, re-renders because the prop changes, and you get the update on the screen. Okay? No problem. The point is what happens with the use effect? So these two use effects, my static, my dynamic number is. Let's have a look at the console. Okay? Let's clean the console and uh, reload the application. Okay? Okay. I reloaded the application, the component is already shown, so it's uh, been already mounted. It's already mounted, it's there. We saw it before, it's here. Right? Not uh, hidden, like the form in your application when you need to show the form, click to show the form, and the form is not yet shown, okay? So it's already here, so it's already been mounted. So we said, that use effect runs the callback in any case at mount time plus if the array is not empty every time the num changes okay so in short at mount time they should run both callbacks okay both callbacks should run react should run both callbacks indeed that's what happens right Great is okay, now it was the other coupon. My static number is three, and my dynamic number is three. Okay? That's what happened. Okay? And the second part is uh, sort of unfortunate, but uh, I mean, uh, it runs twice in the bug mode. <laughs> okay? So we are debugging. So we are using the debugging mode of React, which is actually here, strict mode. Okay, and uh, in strict mode, the mount runs twice because React wants to check if you did things correctly, okay? If it gets uh, two different results, it will print warning and stuff, okay? So that's why we get two console logs for, for, for the same thing, okay? So it mounts once and then it mounts a second time, just in the bug mode, okay? We will keep this debug mode also for the submission, for the exam. We know that this stuff happens. It's not a problem. It's not even a problem if we load the stuff from the server because typically, in these cases, you will only put get requests, which are item potent towards the server. So you can do once, you can do twice, but the result is the same, okay? So it's not a problem for us. But the advantage of having this debug mode active, 
which React calls uh, strict mode is greater than you know removing it if you remove the strict mode you will see there's just one print but i invite you not to do that okay because it's easier to develop and to debug the application okay okay uh, so we can say it works as expected right uh, so yes and then and then we need to press on the button. So we need to change the state. We in turn, we'll change the props. Props num. Let's press the button. OK? And you see that, uh, uh, and you see that uh, there is a one additional print, just one. My dynamic number is four. OK? So remember what we printed. Uh, what does the count? Okay, so this has been run, and indeed it printed something. The other is not run anymore because the component will not mount again. To mount again, a component need to be need to be uh, deleted from the virtual DOM. So it needs first to unmount and then to be mounted at the gain. And the only way we have is to make a render where the component is not present anymore. Okay? That's the only way that we have to uh, make a component unmount. We, we don't render it anymore. So it, it disappears from the JSX that defines the, the virtual DOM that we would like to show. Okay? That's exactly what happened when you implemented the form that shows and disappears, okay? The form component gets mounted and then unmounted when you make it disappear. And then it's unmounted again when you, when you make it appear again, okay? It doesn't stay there hidden. It's not hidden, it really disappears. The state is lost, okay? When, when you have the router and the router decides that uh, something should be shown or something should not be shown, when it's not shown, it disappears, okay? It disappears from the virtual DOM, so it's unmounted, and when it appears again, it has a new state, okay? Uh, <coughs> okay. So we need to understand when uh, components uh, are mounted and when they are unmounted, okay? And they are unmounted basically when uh, they disappear from the virtual DOM, okay? Yeah, that's the question. A, a real example of what? Yeah. For? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, a real example is, is later, <laughs> I would say, uh, it's, uh, yeah, like here, okay, with the flipped text, okay, so, every time you have a text in the text box that changes, you would like to run a request towards the server and get the answer and display the answer, okay? That's a possible example. I mean, most examples in your application will be interaction with the server, okay? The other example, I mean, most common example, but not always required, is you set a timeout. So after a timeout expires, you change a state, okay? That's a side effect, and that tends to be run in a, in a use effect as well, okay? But uh, remember that all these things can also be run in uh, event handlers, okay? And we already did, because uh, you can set uh, a state, and you can set the timeout, and you can will also be able to run, uh, um, I mean, to, to, to initiate the data loading from the server, okay? Because event handlers are not run during the render phase, are managed by React, that's true, 
but they are not in the render phase. The important thing is that they are not in the render phase. So there you can set the state, and you can set timeout, and you can load the, st load the information from the server, and so on. Okay? So, of course, uh, I know that uh, this uh, initial example is a bit uh, theoretical. <laughs> okay? Even though at the exam, uh, you know, people invent everything. <laughs> I mean, uh, state that changes depending on props and so on. That, that is basically the idea of this example, okay? Because at a certain point, you don't know how to implement things, and so you start thinking, well, I should change the state if this, uh, this prop changes and so on, which is not recommended, by the way, because you complicate the logic of, the, of your uh, uh, application, okay? So, it's possible, of course. I mean, use effect is very, very flexible, and it's possible to do you know, complicated things. Uh, but uh, try to be on the simplest solution, uh, if possible, because, uh, you know, React has this uh, way of distributing the state. If you need the state in the whole application, put it into app, no problem in putting the state into app, and then distribute it to, distribute it to, uh, through properties, pass callbacks if you need to modify the state, and everything else goes into the use effect. And the only thing that should go into use effect is mostly data loading. Okay? <coughs> okay. So that's the timeline of what is happening here. The component counts is created. When I load the application, it's mounted in app, so function count is called. So function count is this one. Function count. So that's the function that defines the component. That is called by React. Use effects are registered and not executed. Okay? Because the function, oops, the function calls use effect, doesn't call the callback. Calls a use effect that takes a callback as a parameter to be run later by React. Okay, so we say it's registered, not executed. Okay, so the use effects are registered, not executed. The JSX is returned with the number three, the initial value. That's a props that we got. Let's have a look at the code. You see, return div props num div. Very simple, that's what we return. And in the beginning, we get three. Then Component is just mounted, so run first effect. Console log my static number is. Second uh, use effect, run second effect. Console log my dynamic number is. So three and three. That's what we got in the console, right? Yes, static number and dynamic number. Then, then, then nothing happens. As usual, it's a web application. Until the user does something, nothing happens. Either you were waiting for data from the server or nothing happens. Or you set the timeout or nothing happens. So that's why you have the three dots here. Then somebody makes something happen. The user clicks on the button. App updates the state because you have the event handler that sets the state. A React sets the state in an asynchronous way, but this is just a detail here. So the state at a certain point uh, gets a number four. So function count is called again for a rendering. But why? Because it, a prop that goes to, uh, to count has changed. Now it's four, and before it was three. So the component needs to be re-rendered. So again, the function is called and executed. You re-register the two use effects, okay? But actually, they are the same as before, okay? And um, the JSX is returned with the number four. Props number is changed, okay? So you have uh, now the current four and the previous was three. And React recognized this uh, um, situation because you had the use effect before that was called with the value three. And now it is called, the same use effect is called with the number four. So React remembers the previous values is uh, different, so it reruns the callback of the use effect. 
okay? But only the dynamic one, because the other one has no dependency, so it just run once at mount time. That's all, okay? And indeed, that's what we saw in the browser. We saw the dynamic number, sorry, the, it was four, this one, okay? And I already explained to uh, you why we got the double uh, print, okay? But just for debug mode. So in short, uh, React actually mount things to, uh, twice, okay, for debug, okay? Okay, a state variable may be listed as a dependency in an effect. When the state changes, the effect is run, and if the state is updated but the value doesn't change, the effect is not run. So, it depends, okay? So, we can put anything as a dependency if we run the code of a component and what is in the list of the use effect didn't change, the use effect will not run, okay? There can be states outside the list of dependencies. The component will re-render, but the use effect will not uh, be run, okay? In the sense, the callback of the use effect will not be run, okay? Inside the use effect, you can do more, uh, more or less uh, what you want. You may schedule a state update, okay? As you, as you would do with the um, event handler, okay? The same. The state will be updated after the effect is finished asynchronously, okay? As usual, any state update in React is asynchronous. And if the state value changes, of course the component is re-rendered, okay? And in short, we will use this system to load data from the server. We will uh, write a callback that makes a request to the server, and when we got the request, we put the values, the return value of the request or what we got from the server into a state. So we'll trigger the re-render, but we need to do it in an use effect. We cannot do it in the code of the, uh, of the component. Otherwise, every time it gets rendered, it sends something, we receive a value, and then we set the state and we enter an infinite loop because every time you set the state, you re-render the component, okay? So with the use effect, there is always the risk to do, I mean, without the use effect, there is always the risk to do uh, something wrong, like an infinite loop. If you do a set state on a state that triggers the re-render of the component, you enter an infinite loop, okay? And indeed, that's why you shouldn't do that. You should do it in a use effect, in a controlled way, where you decide when to run this code. Okay? Let's have a look at this code before loading stuff from the server. Okay? Our target is, uh, yeah, loading state uh, from the server, okay, for today. And the rest is just for the next section. So let's have a look at this quick gate component, which is a state open and, uh, or, or not open, okay? So it's false in the beginning and then it's true. And basically it shows you the state. So it says go or stop depending on the value of the state, open, okay? That's just a string. We could have written open, I mean, true or false, that's the same, okay? Or click the gate opens, okay? But we would like that the gate, so actually the state, changes after a certain amount of time, automatically to another value. So it closes automatically. It's like a door that you, you open and after a while it closes, okay? So how can you do that? You set the timeout, okay? That's a normal JavaScript, set timeout. You pass a callback and the callback can do anything, including setting a state. And after a while, it will be executed. So 500 milliseconds, half a second. Okay? Uh, open me, just a set open true. And there's no close, okay? Because it closes automatically. It just scheduled this set timeout that after a certain amount of time, it will call set state, so the set open false. 
Okay? Let's try it. So, again, that's another example. The gate, quick gate, yes. So that's the code that you saw on the slide. I just put uh, one second instead of half a second, so it's easier to see, okay? And it's just, you know, rendered here, okay? No properties. The state is inside the component, quick gate, Okay, let's have a look at how it works, okay? There's nothing printed here, so we can close this stuff, okay? There's a stop, there's a gate, okay? I click on stop, let me click, and then I don't click, and after a while it becomes a stop again, okay? So the state has changed automatically after that I clicked uh, without me doing anything, okay? So I click again, and then it changes automatically. That's another way of using the use effect. I mean, scheduling something for later. Okay? I cannot write set timeout. Uh, what's this? The slide. Okay. I cannot write a set timeout directly in the code here or the quick gate because I never know when the quick gate will be called. It depends on React. It's React that decides when to render the components. Okay? So it's a side effect. I need to put it into a use effect. Okay? Of course, these are very simple examples. Maybe somebody of you knows how to implement without the use effect. Okay? It's a very simple example. Well, we, we, we can set the timeout uh, in the event hand, okay? We don't really need the use effect. But we would like to show the use effect, okay? And how it works. So what are the operations that happen, okay? Because then when we, 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 you will load the information from the server, you will have no alternative, okay? To set the state depending on an asynchronous event, okay? And you need to put it into a use effect at least when the component is mounted. If you have an event, you can put in the event handler. But if you don't have an event, what do you do? Okay? The point of using the use effect is that you don't have an event, or the event is something created by React, changing a props, changing a state. Okay? And so there's no alternative in using the use effect. To using the use effect, sorry. Okay, so what happens here? The component quick gated is created and mounted in app. Function quick gate is called. Use state creates the state with the default value false. Until now, nothing new. Use effect is registered. Again, not executed, just registered. So it says that there's a callback to be called when the property open changes. But that's the first time we call the use effect. And the use effect knows that has been called for the first time. So it will execute the callback anyway later. Because that's the behavior of the use effect. Every time it's called, at least once, it executes the callback. Then the JSX is returned with the value. Open was false, so it will be returned with the stop. Component is just mounted, so we run the use, eff uh, the use effect callback. So the set timeout is executed, and the timeout is set. Okay? The timeout expires and this open, the set open is executed and the state open becomes false, which is actually no change. But the use effect is executed. If you put a console log inside the use effect, you will see that it will get executed. The point is simply that for React, nothing changed because the state was false and then it is false again. Okay? So, you don't need to re-render because the state is the same and the props are the same. Actually, no props are passed, okay? But if you put a console log here before the, se uh, before the set timeout, you will see that it will be um, executed, okay? Then, again, nothing happens. It's a web application. We wait for a synchronous event. The user clicks on the, uh, actually on the span, so on the, on the string. Open me callback is called, the set open true is executed. 
So the state open becomes true asynchronously, so React uh, you know, does all its operations, it decides to update the state, it updates the state, okay? So the component re-renders, the JSX is returned, go, so we clicked and go appears, and that's the usual stuff, just changing the state. But the use effect is run again because it finds that the list of dependencies is something that has changed. So now, open is not false, but it's true. So the callback of the use effect needs to be executed. And it will be executed. So set timeout, set open false in 500 milliseconds. OK? So set timeout is executed, timeout is set. Nothing happens again. But this time, there's an asynchronous event waiting to happen. That is the timeout expiration. So the timeout expires after 500 milliseconds, and the set open is executed. And so the state open becomes false, and so the state changes without us users doing anything. Okay, we are not doing anything. There's some asynchronous event that makes the, start, uh, the state change, and React acts accordingly. So simply updates all the all the components when the when it says a state that changes it updates the component so the state uh, 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 where are it yeah state open becomes well components re renders so it shows uh, uh, um, stop okay the use effect finds uh, uh, open change from true to false so it is rerun uh, re again. But as in the previous time, it's false, it's set to false, nothing changes, and the thing stops there, OK? Because React can see that the state didn't change, so it doesn't re-render the component, OK? And that's all. Reflect very well and think very well about this timeline because this explains everything step by step what's happening with the use effect and you need to have this very very clear okay because you see that sometimes callbacks are executed but they have no effect it might happen okay especially with simple states like this uh, some uh, warnings Make sure the array includes all values from the component scope, such as prop and state that change over time and that are used by the effect. Actually, React will warn you in the console if you forget to include some dependency, okay? Because this is very risky behavior, okay? Because typically, if you're using a value in the callback of the use effect, it's because you want to run the callback again if the value changes. It's typically an error, okay? There might be cases in which it, it works, but I mean, it's typically an error. Indeed, React, it gives you a warning, not an error, okay? So as a rule, we can say that every value reference inside the effect function should also appear in the dependency array. That includes everything, arguments to function, variables, and so on, okay? Also, the ones access to clo through closures. But I mean used, that means, okay? Closure is automatic by, by JavaScript. Be careful if the array includes variables that always change when executing the effect, you risk having an infinite loop. React will uh, re-render many times. Uh, it has a counter inside, and after a while it says, I have enough. <laughs> Okay, so it stops re-render and says there's an infinite loop, you should fix something, okay? At least in that development mode, okay? Um, and of course it's wrong. You should not have, you should never have a situation like this, okay? At the se it's true that uh, one thing should, can trigger another thing and so on, another update, etc. But at a certain point the chain must finish, because otherwise it's a loop, okay? If you include a dependency that changes every time you run the callback, you create a loop, okay? So it shouldn't happen. There's something wrong in the logic of your application. Okay, let's see the example with the fetch. 
and then we are almost done for today. So, uh, well, there are two examples. Th this is more complex, they say. Uh, in a use effect, you can run a function to load something from a server, okay? For instance, you can load something depending on the value of a prop. For instance, here we have a query that is passed as a prop to uh, this fetch employees by query, okay? It's just an example, a piece of code taken from something that could be an actual application where you have a, a URL and you would like to run a, a query on the server every time this URL changes, okay? So the query part, the part that is typically after the uh, question mark, okay? Uh, but this is just as an example taken from the internet, just to say that uh, you can do also complex things, okay, with this uh, use effect. And you will do it for the exam, don't worry, okay? Because, I mean, uh, the exam is basically put all these things together and being able to load the data from the server and display them uh, as it's appropriate for your application. Um, I'm not really sure, uh, yeah, we see an example here just to say uh, that uh, um, you should be careful, the only thing you cannot do in the use effect callback is that you cannot uh, directly pass an async function, okay? But you can run an async function, you just define a callback, you define the async function inside the callback, and then you call the async function, even co with the await if you, if, um, um, if you like, okay? Oh, no, sorry, with the await is because typically inside the code you would like to use the await, okay? Since you would like to use the await inside of the then catch, okay? Because you have a promise when you run the fetch. You can use the then catch or you can use a wait. To use a wait, you need an async function, but you cannot pass the async function directly to the use effect. And so you define a callback in which you define the async function and then you execute the uh, function itself, okay? The async function itself. Of course, without the await, okay? Otherwise, you are back to the starting point, okay? Um, so this cannot be an async function. You cannot write something like this. It will give you an error, okay? That's basically because when you have a use effect, a React wants to execute something, okay? And then if there's an await, no problem. It will schedule something later in JavaScript, okay? But React wants to execute something immediately when you have a user effect, okay? Even if it's just invoking an async function, okay? So, it's just a, a small trick, but very useful. Let's see this example, that's the one that we have in the, in the code, okay? This stuff that flips uh, the, the, the text. Actually, I mean, it's just a kind of joke. I mean, you cannot really flip text, okay? It just looks uh, for, this, there's a library that looks for uh, characters that seems more or less uh, the, the flipped version of the other characters. Like uh, you see that the D flipped uh, is a P uh, and the L is an I, uppercase I, uh, stuff like that, okay? More or less. Uh, so it just, uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, work uh, so well because there are no real, uh, uh, you know, characters uh, rotated by 180 degrees, okay? But I mean, we don't really care about this stuff. There's a library that we will run on the server, this flip text, uh, just to, to play a little bit, okay? We could have returned everything uppercase, that's the same, okay? We don't really care what's happening on the server. We care ab about the fact that we would like to make a request uh, to the server and get an answer and show the answer, okay? That's the whole point of having this use effect for today. So use effect and use state, uh, there's a state text, uh, and then there's the flipped text, which is actually the answer from the server. So the text is actually to have a controlled form. So this state text is what is inside the current uh, form, the text box. And the flipped is what is coming back from the server. Okay? 
So what you see here in the bottom part is standard stuff that you already learned when you dealt with the forms. As a state, uh, it's a handler on change of the form, okay? So value on change, handle change, set text, even target value, nothing new. The new part is here, use effect. When the text changes, we run the code of the um, use effect again, okay? And since the fetch flipped that we defined here is an async function because we would like to say a way to fetch with the URL, okay? We need to call it separately and we cannot just write async stuff uh, exactly as a parameter of the use effect because the use effect uh, has this limitation it cannot take an async function directly okay that's that's all then we await fetch we load uh, the information the information is provided us uh, in json format we already saw before but we see it again now so we need to parse it in json from json to uh, a javascript object and then we take the text field of the JavaScript object and we set it as a state, okay? And the rest, as usual, happens automatically because the state is shown here in the return and it's a state, a React state. So React knows when it changes because we call it the set state or the set flipped here. It's just called asynchronously. That's the only difference with respect to what we saw until now, okay? Okay, let's see how things work. Oh, by the way, you see this server runs on 3001 and we are serving our, our application on 5173, the, the number of the port. So we have the course problem, okay? And so let's see how it works. So that's the text flipper. That's the same code as the slide. Okay, I just included this part, okay, which I didn't put on the slide. So we are doing a cross origin request. We are served on localhost 5173 and we are doing a request on localhost 3001. Okay, so if we do nothing, this request will be blocked. But if the server, which is running here, it says up use course. That's what we were saying in the uh, seeing in the beginning. It will simply answer with the, uh, with the allow origin everything, right? So let's see allow co access control allow origin asterisk. Okay. So this core request can be will be done in any case. But the answer value can be read by the JavaScript running in the browser that has a different origin because the origin is 5173. That's the React application. I, I showed you in the beginning of this lecture, if we remove this instruction, so the course in the server, there's no allow origin. And so this answer cannot be read, okay? Note that uh, uh, I just loaded the application, now I reloaded it, okay? You see that uh, there's already a request. This is a use effect. At the component mount, a request will start because the callback will be executed anyway, regardless of the value of text. Where's the, 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 yeah. Because that's the way use effect works. At least once it will execute the callback. You can do nothing about this. You can have an if inside if you like, okay? And decide if you would like to do something or not, okay? Uh, that's your code. You can decide to do whatever you want. But the callback will be called in any case, okay? Actually, as we saw before, it will be called the twice and it did, it, it sent two uh, this, uh, the same two requests to the server. 
But since it's a GET request, it's usually not a problem, okay? We should never run into problems with this uh, kind of approach, okay? That's why also React allows to do, you know, this... Uh, it's uh, safe to use this debug mode with React, and React introduced uh, this uh, debug mode, okay? For the exam, uh, in general, for your project, if you run into a, a case in which it's a problem to run twice a request to the server at component mount, there's probably wr something wrong. And I mean, I would say for sure, there's something wrong in the logic of your application. You can implement it differently and probably even better than what you are doing now, okay? But I mean, uh, uh, if somebody has some doubts, of course, uh, can, can ask, okay? Uh, but I mean, since y typically you only run GET request in this occasion, okay? And the rest depends on event handlers, which have not this problem. Um, so let's type something. Uh, what can we type? Nine, okay? You see the request, nine here. Uh, there's a response. Let's have a look at the response. So that's JSON, you see, uh, curly bracket, text, colon, and the value in the form of a string, six, okay? Nine becomes six, and six becomes nine. Let's just flip a text, okay? But the point is, what happened? The use effect has been run because a property, no, actually a state, sorry, not a property. This is a state. A state has been changed without us doing anything. Again, we could have tried to write this stuff uh, here inside the event handler, but it's d more and more difficult because you need to know, check if the old value of the state is equal to the new one, otherwise you run uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, query. Uh, so this request towards the server, and then in any case you need to set the state. But the state is set asynchronously, and, you know, it becomes um, much more messy, I would say, okay? Um, so I think uh, more or less uh, th this is all what we saw here, okay? Yes? Uh, it's it cannot be? Uh, that's uh, because React decided this way. We have no answer, I mean, uh, it's a requirement by React. I mean, I can give you, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, I can speculate a little bit because uh, it's, it's difficult to react to maintain a, a queue of, uh, you know, promises instead of executing something during the commit phase, okay? And so they decided you shouldn't, uh, um, uh, you shouldn't pass an async function because you are passing a promise. Okay. Uh, instead, they decide that I have something to run. I, I start running it, and then if it wants to do something asynchronous, it, it's the the functions problem. So it's up to JavaScript to schedule uh, and to put it into the callback queue when uh, you have something back uh, coming from from the async function. Okay. But that's just my speculation. Okay. From the point of view of React, you take the Use effect manual, it says the callback cannot be an async function. That's all. Okay? And so the trick is define an async function with, uh, inside the, the function and call it. Okay? And so, since uh, we are a bit late, and in any case, we will resume from this point next time, so on Thursday. Uh, this is just a summary. Okay? Try to focus on this summary. We didn't see the unmount yet. We will discuss it next time, but it's not so common to have this cleanup function, at least in our simple examples, okay? You only need to know that every time the use effect, I mean, the use effect calls once every time at component mount, and then it can call only once every time or when something changes in the dependency list. That's all the thing that you need to remember. And try to think about the example. Try the example that I put online by yourself. And if you have questions, next time on Thursday, we will uh, discuss them, okay? 
And of course, we will go into more details and more examples about how to load stuff and so on, because it's very, very important for the application. Okay? So, to, tomorrow there will be lab still on the router, okay, React router, and then we will start labs about this stuff, okay? So we are two-thirds of the course, more or less, right? Okay. So if you don't have questions, I think for it's all for today, and we will meet on Thursday, okay? Try to take advantage of the lab as much as possible, as I told you, but please tell your colleagues to come to the lab, okay? <laughs> because we hope it's useful, right? I, I, you can come to the lab and do the second lab, the third lab, we de re don't really care, okay? I mean, we are not uh, giving you marks because uh, you are coming or not coming or you are doing all their things and so on. Try to take advantage of the possibility you have. Okay? That's all. Thank you. See you.